Peace be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We are blessed again to be in God's house, to worship his holy name, to sing his praises, to hear his word, to gather our hearts and minds before him in our prayers and concerns. The printed service is before us. The opening hymn, for those of you following along at home, if you have a Lutheran service book, it is hymn number 528, and we will be singing the, the printed verses 1, 3, 5, and 7. We begin our worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. And at the times we have the opportunity to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing the glory in excelsis.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you give your children many blessings even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to the reading of the scripture. The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 56. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to, to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. I ask them, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I'm speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards to the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards the election, They are beloved for the sake of their forefathers, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient, in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also now may receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to their dogs. Jesus, but she said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. 
be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn number 571 in Lutheran service book, God loved the world so that he gave, number 571. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you as you gather your people once again in your house to worship your holy name. We praise you for all the benefits you pour down upon us, but above all, we praise you as you have given us your Son, your only Son, 
to die for our sins and by your mighty hand to be raised in the third day. We praise you as the Holy Spirit has come to us to lead us into all truth, bring us to faith, and guide us in that faith until we stand before you in eternity. And especially at this moment, may the words of this mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. What kind of fisherman are you? Some might say the best kind of fisherman is on Friday night when the fish fry is really good. As a child, I grew up knowing only a cane pole and a can of worms on the backwaters of the Manitowoc River. But then as I grew, my brothers-in-law and friends introduced me to bass boats and the multiple different kinds of lures. I still wanted that simple cane pole and a can of worms, and my brother-in-law had 13 different rods for all the different kinds of fish. And when I became a parent, I had the privilege of going back to the cane pole days, putting worms on the hooks for my children, fishing for all sorts of critters that swim in the, in the lake. But one thing became very apparent as a parent. I had to not only catch the fish, but I had to clean them. It's bad enough to put worms on the hook, but then you have to clean the fish. So in a way, I was a lazy fisherman who really wanted more, no more than to drown some worms. Then I became a pastor and was called on to do a lot of other things that took me away from fishing. Several years ago, someone presented me with a t-shirt. It said, had emboldened on the top of it, you will be fishers of men. And then underneath it, you catch them, I'll clean them. You catch them, I'll clean them. And that's a very important thing for us to understand. To be fishers of men is not only the Lord's command, but it is our obligation. The last thing he said to his disciples before he left this earth was, you will be my witnesses. You're going to be out there casting hook nets and setting hooks. The reality is that it's as simple as inviting people to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. We are to give people the evidence of God's will and his law and God's will and his good news for us. That's always important for us then to focus on the teaching, the life, and the actions of Jesus Christ and the difference that those things make in our lives. But this is not just a New Testament concept. We want to remind you of the first verses of the Old Testament lesson, Prophet Isaiah. Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness will be revealed. We in the church and as individual Christians become a beacon, a lighthouse, if you will, in rough seas. We become a safe harbor in the storms of life for those who are seeking the meaning of life and for those who are searching for truth beyond themselves. We hear again from the prophet, and the foreigners 
who, who come to, who in them, and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, these I will bring to my holy mountain. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Apostle Paul recognizes that the Holy Spirit has designated him to be an apostle to the Gentiles, those not of the children and family of Abraham, to, especially to those who have not yet heard in any way, shape, or form the blessed message of God's presence in our lives. And God does desire to restore the wanderer. Again, the prophet. The Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. Outcasts. Somebody who's wandered off from the faith. Someone for any number of reasons has left the fold, has felt to be an outcast. Some might be convinced that they don't fit. Pick a reason. Satan would want to bring us a boatload of reasons and excuses to wander away. That I don't fit. That I'm a dirty carp. Ugh. No offense to carps. I'm a dirty sinner. To which Jesus responds, I will make you clean. The righteousness that the prophet speaks of is then revealed in God's own Son, Jesus Christ. As the scripture is laid before us, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us who are under the wrath and conviction of the law. Jesus was born of the line of Abraham, born of the line of David. He's royalty. By the time we get to the gospel lesson, he's been in ministry for about two years. His fame has spread, and this is even before Facebook and all the other social media sites. His fame has spread. The word's out there. And so he ventures out of the land of his heritage, out of Galilee. It's interesting that he was called and raised, called out of, and raised in the land that was called Galilee of the Gentiles. Not a nice word. Not a complimentary word for the Jewish people of that day. But he ventures out to the land of Tyre and Sidon, probably less than 50 miles, and yet a world away. And here the gospel records the account with a foreigner. With a foreigner. A woman. You've got to catch this. Jewish man, foreign woman. This doesn't happen. Culture is not going to let that happen in that day. She comes, knows who he is, O Lord, son of David, help me. O Lord, son of David, help me. And it says, as this 
desperate woman has hope only in Jesus for her daughter. We then have that amazing exchange between Jesus and the woman. Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, to which the woman responds, Lord, help me. Then Jesus says, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to their dogs. To which the woman responds, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. That's not nice. How could Jesus talk like that? That's just not nice. What's going on here? To the people around, he's just being a good Jewish man talking to a Gentile woman. But there's more to this. It's not mean, but it's blunt and it's probing. Jesus is probing the woman's faith. So deeply is he probing it. I've got grandchildren. And sitting at their table, I've known them to slip a crumb to their pet dogs now and then. The dogs are so happy. They got a little crumb. They received a little crumb and they're so happy. They have received a crumb from their master's table, but it's just a crumb. What this woman is asking for is just a crumb of the great banquet that God would give each one of us in and through Jesus Christ. His desire, I, I, I gotta stop here a second. Could any of us hold up to somebody saying that? I think I'd be posting, this would have been posted, I mean, 17 ways already. Do you know what Jesus said? Could you and I handle that kind of probing from God? We should be able to. Because we have received all the crumbs. I walk, talk, and breathe, more or less. And I have received some healing from him. After this, Jesus says, Woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. This is not the only interaction that our Lord had with foreigners. The centurion in Capernaum. A Roman centurion in Capernaum. He interacted with a Samaritan woman who the Jewish people at that time thought were worse than Gentiles. They were total outcasts. A Samaritan woman who says, I don't have a husband right now, to which Jesus says, I know you don't. You've had six husbands, and the man you're living with right now isn't your husband. I know. The leper who came back to thank Jesus for healing him was a Samaritan. All of these people were cleansed of physical, physical ills. But those are crumbs, because Jesus saves. The Lord looks upon every one of us as an individual who is a foreigner and an outcast. And he says, I will make you clean. I will make you pure. He's done so through his mighty word that comes to us in the powerful waters of baptism. 
But remember, baptism is not just a simple ordinance of the church. It's not your get into church card only. The Apostle Paul reminds us what is the depth and power of baptism? Do you not know that all of you who have been baptized into Jesus Christ have been baptized into his death so that you too might be raised to a new life? In other words, baptism, its power, that simple washing of water with the word, its power is in the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. The scripture continues to remind us that by his blood we are washed clean. What kind of fisherman are you? It's not easy sometimes to be a fisherman for other men, for Christ. I would have suggest that we use a little fishing analogy. Just bait the hook. Just cast it out. And let the power of the Holy Spirit guide your words, your actions, our collective words and actions to lead people to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The call to us is to this day, to churches and individual Christians, invite them to hear the message. Christ will make them clean. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand now as the offerings are brought forward, and then we will join our hearts in prayer. We do praise God for this opportunity to bring tithes and offerings to his altar for ministry here and throughout the world. God's mercy has been upon many people in this congregation during the last days, weeks, as uh, we will continue in our prayers of God's comfort to be upon the family and friends of David Spomer family and friends of Carol Larson, especially upon Gloria King at the death of her grandson Cody, and upon Esther Nybar, Nybar at the uh, passing of her husband Ralph. We pray, friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me. As Christ our Lord has taught us to, and freely promised to hear us, God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world. Through the pure and true teaching of your word and the firm love shown in our lives, Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring us transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith. The number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all for who are in need, 
praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bring peace and healing to this nation, that you would guide those in leadership, that they would lead according to your will. Be with all those who are unable to go about their daily tasks because of health or confinement, be with those who are in need of your healing hand. We especially pray that your comfort would be upon those who mourn the passing of David Spomer, Carol Larson, Cody King, and Ralph Nybar. You have promised your compassion, and you have granted us that in the knowledge of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And lastly, oops, we trust, O oh oh Lord, in your mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, remember us in, our, in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, one dealing with the uh, funeral arrangements have been made for the uh, Nyhard funeral. Uh, Ralph's funeral will take place here in church on Wednesday. The visitation will begin at 10 a.m. and the service will follow at 10 at 11:30. Yellow sheet, take it home. Take a note on there where it says this week's attendance in worship. I checked uh, yesterday. The, the Facebook views was up to 151. So the word is going out to many places. And if you, anyone, receives those views or wants to check back, did Pastor really say that? You need to thank the boys and girls in the back, John and Tim and others who run the cameras and make sure the switches are going in the right direction. Give them a thank you as you leave, a high five, thumbs up, whatever, and a praise God as you leave worship today. Now, Christ, be my leader.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.